Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined today by my lovely co-host, the one, the only, Casey Briggs. Me? Yeah, you. What up? We're the only two in here talking. I know. Royal Rumble 2002, baby. I just didn't know if you were blaming someone else for us being a couple minutes late because it certainly wasn't my fault. Now, see, this was going to definitely be an off-air topic, but Casey wanted to bring it up. We had a little <laughs> miscommunication on where the link was. I have my proof. I'm waiting for his proof. Oh. I sent it on time. Uh-huh. Maybe it wasn't the most timely, but it was on time still. All right. Someone's, someone's too busy tweeting about Braun Breakers, Pex or something. You want a you want a friend? Get a dog. <laughs> Love that guy. But uh, we appreciate everybody who is here joining us, and we've got a classic retro review for you guys. I told you new content was coming this year. I hope that you guys haven't been disappointed. And uh, we're gonna start off with the intro. We're gonna get into the Royal Rumble 2002. Let's get it. Casey, Royal Rumble. I want to talk to you first about what does that mean to you, especially? Um, your the, pay-per-view, you've mentioned it to me a few times. The Rumble, the Rumble is my favorite WWE pay-per-view. It is the one that I will still tune in for. Because uh, as you know, I'm not the biggest WWE guy anymore over the last few years. But uh, no matter what, no matter the distance, I come back for the Rumble. It's just, there's something about it, man. It's just fun having uh, having 30 dudes jumping, uh, and now women, you know, jumping in a ring together and chucking each other over the top rope. It's just fun. It's just fun. It is. You can't you can't beat it. And it's kind of the one thing when people think of wrestling, they're always like, oh, like the Battle Royals with all the guys and they're punching each other and stuff. That's what people always think of when you hear the Royal Rumble. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to the people who have joined us early. Azan White says it was the night of returns. It was. It was. And we're going to get into all of those. Connor has said, hello, Conrad and Casey. What's going on, Connor? Um. Rob says, so this is what it's like not to get blamed, <laughs> to not get blamed. Uh, here Rob, we go. Rob, I'm to get out in front of it. You got to blame him before he can blame you. That See, this is politics at its finest, folks. Learn them. Learn them. And I'm a real leader. So what I do is mute the other person's mic and blame them the entire time for what uh -huh. has happened and what has went wrong. Um, Azan said Royal Rumble 02 was the crossroads of so many eras. Interesting, interesting. I'm sure we'll get into that. No Lara, been a been a while. What's going on, No Lara? Appreciate you coming in with the uh hello. Um yeah. So Casey, let's talk the Royal Rumble 2002, shall we? Let's um, do it. 20 year anniversary. Going into the show, do you remember how you felt? Because we're coming off of the invasion era and that unification of the WCW World Heavyweight Championship and the WWF Championship. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was jazzed about. It. I've you know, I've always been a Jericho fan, um, so I was always a fan of him having that that honor, that distinction, and uh, I remember. I, and I was always a big rock fan, so I remember being, you know, excited for this uh, because of that match on this card. And then, um, yeah, I, I actually like what the that person said there because this is kind of like, a, you know, there's there's people from that would become bigger stars in the years to come, jumping in and taking on guys that were already major stars. And uh, that's one of the things I love about the Rumble is uh, you get to see people face off and, and lock horns that sometimes you normally wouldn't see. I will say, too, 2002 may be the year where the roster is the most stacked from, like, star power, talent point. Like, there were people sometimes that you're like, how this guy's not in the main event. This is, like, the second match on the show. 
how is he in the second match on the show? So yeah. it makes things uh, very interesting. Um, we, oh, we got some more people coming in. Uh, Casey, we talk about Mr. WrestleMania, Mr. SummerSlam. Who's Mr. Royal Rumble to you? No, Lara has come in and chimed in with Steve Austin as Mr. Royal Rumble. Um, It's hard to disagree with that. He, you know, three wins under his belt, numerous numerous screen grabs of him chilling on the turnbuckle looking at his his watch i can do the bald one yeah the hands on the head so um, yeah i it's i think i think i might agree with with that uh we got positively e what's going on e I, he wrote you got this all right what's up uh six said we live we are live live brother we are live live uh and derek says yo 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 what's up d what up, Derek? So, all right, we've talked. We've talked about the kind of the the feels of this, and you talked about what uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin had under his belt. And if you guys want to make sure that things under your belt stay groomed like Stone Cold Steve Austin, you guys are going to want to use our promo code EPW Show when you go to manscaped.com. You can get 20% off of the new Lawnmower 4.0. This thing gets you trimmed and ready to win. So make sure that you guys get your boys as bald as Stone Cold's head and you guys go to manscaped.com, promo code EPW Show. And use that same promo code at powerslam.tv and watch some independent pro wrestling on us. Why not? The show's called Everything Pro Wrestling. I know you like wrestling. I like wrestling. You like wrestling. Why not watch some free wrestling? That That's my shilling for tonight. Great segue. It was. It was. And, you know, me and Stone Cold are both bald, so it kind of works there. Uh, don't use Manscaped on your head, though. At least not this one. So we have, um, oh man, people are, people are bummed for Kane. Kane runner up in so many rumbles. Somebody's got to be the guy. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Facts. Uh, What's up, fellas from Derek? Uh, This year's Royal Rumble is going to be nothing but Roman Reigns coming out in different (laughs) costumes. It could be. It could be. Kane uh, was in the Rumble last year. Crazy. Yeah, Kane, I think, has the most consecutive Rumbles, I'm pretty sure. Just be careful with the loofahs in the shower. (laughs) Whoa, whoa. I'm a big fan of the loofahs. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, It was around this time I started watching WWE in 2002, being a young kid, seeing these guys rise uh, and who they would become. Brock, Randy, John Cena, Dave Bautista. (laughs) Maven got his – we're not not ready to talk about that yet. That's my. Well, we'll gonna, get there. We'll that's get my there. gushing moment. Let's talk about the uh, opening match, Casey, for the WWF Tag Team Titles. We have the Dudley Boys with the Duchess of Dudleyville, Stacy Keebler versus Taz and Spike Dudley. One of those tag teams that I don't even really remember them being the tag team champions. You want to talk about when you look at this roster and you see guys that you're like, how are they not higher on the card? Spike Dudley. Listen, bro, I like Spike a lot. Spike was great. He was he was good at what what he what he did. We are but, being told, uh, we are being told to look up the Stone Cold Lufa story. I have fears right now. Ugh. Um, um, what'd you think, man? Spike coming out in the neck brace. I mean, we clearly thought they had a chance, right? <laughs> when you see yeah, that, bro, I. I don't remember this tag team at all. So, whatever. I I love I loved watching Taz back back in the day, before before he went like back when he still had a neck, you know. <laughs> Taz Taz was great. I really felt like they missed the opportunity too during the invasion angle when like him and Austin would get in each other's faces. You missed the chance to really give Taz something, bro. Like they never did it. Yeah, they never did it. Um. Let me see here. The shortest tag team champs ever. <laughs> Terrible is on. Uh, Respect the Craft Podcast. That's Ray who says, what's up, bros? What's going on, Ray? Um, they had a long run with them belts. Spike and Taz were dope, positively, he says. Yeah, this was just, it, it felt very weird. So Spike's supposed to be the younger brother of the Dudleys. Don't ask about the family tree. It gets confusing. Sign guy Dudley, somebody's in there. Joel Gertner's mixed in there, too, I think. And um, very Big weird. Dick. <laughs> Big Dick Dudley, yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, 
He is a legend. Um, let's see here. So Spike takes a beating in the neck brace. Bubba dominates this match. Like he basically beats the crap out of Spike for most of it. Yep. And Bubba is a supreme crap talker. Spike hits a Dudley dog. He gets cut off. Uh, Devon misses the top rope headbutt because he's Devon, and this kind of stuff always happens to him. Taz gets the hot tag. Stacy gets on the apron to interfere. Um, Taz mission after they collide into Stacy. Devon taps. Tag titles retain, bro. Yeah. I, was- I, I'm not going to lie. I, I was shocked that they retained. Me too. Me too. I was like, don't the Dudleys win this? I mean, I know their reign doesn't continue too much longer. I gave this a B minus. I don't know if you're doing the grading scale for this, but that sounds about right. It was, it was, it, it, it is what it was. Okay. So, you know, I wasn't mad that I sat through it, but it didn't blow me away. <laughs> right. Chat's got some, some comments here. Rob said, I feel like Taz was a, uh, politic because he would always call out the w the main wwf wcw guys when he was at ecw could be you know wrestling they don't hold grudges in this right never uh azan said i thought devon was big d does <laughs> no uh no no azan we'll, we'll go through that another time in an ecw review for you though yeah we'll do the whole family tree of the dudleys that's a separate video <laughs> that might be patreon when we start one up uh no lara says for this year's women's rumble i'll give it to uh live and for the men's big e okay okay uh how many oranges was this worth casey <laughs> rob said this was uh a b minus is about 42 oranges 42 oranges it's all yeah. subjective people i really want a shirt rob make that shirt for me it's all subjective and i want yeah. a I love everything pro wrestling shirt i think people would buy that like new york style we'll talk Casey, if you got design ideas, let me know. You, you're usually a creative one. Uh, we get highlights of the feud between William Regal and Edge showing the weapons being used from steel chairs to brass knuckles. Edge cuts a promo. It's crazy to see how far Edge has come because these promos were yeeks. <laughs> you yeah. know, a little like, yeah. ah, thank goodness you got so much better at this. Um, and, and you know what? I liked Edge back during this time, though. Mid-card yeah, so did I. Edge Edge was awesome. He was uh I was just gonna say something mean about Christian, but I won't. Uh yeah, please he don't was, because he was, you know how I feel. Yeah, I mean I like Christian too, but Edge was definitely the bigger star of the two. Christian is the definition of what we said about Kane earlier. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. If someone always steals Christian's thunder on his wedding day, that's that's who Christian is. I make this debut. See a punk and Daniel Bryan come right behind me. I make this big debut. Kurt Angle's here at TNA now, and it's just like, can the man catch a break? Give yeah. him a break. Um, the the most important thing here. Uh oh, sorry, Google picking me up here on my phone. That was crazy. Shout out to Bixby. Um. The Intercontinental Championship, William Regal versus the champion Edge. Casey's favorite part about Edge, though, is his Rob Zombie theme. In my Durango, somewhere in yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm such a massive Rob Zombie fan. <laughs> Never yeah. going to stop me. Um, yeah. I don't know where that ranks. I, I, got, like I, got, I got Michael Myers here on the wall behind me. You'll never find, you'll never find a, a picture of Rob Zombie's Michael Myers on my wall. Let's just say that. Not a fan. Um, <laughs> no comment on that movie. Um, William Regal hits a nice half Nelson suplex on edge. The crazy part was William Regal was one of the better wrestlers of this time. We talk about in ring work and stuff now in wrestling so often. And back then, none of this stuff mattered. Like when I was watching this, I'm like, none of this shit mattered to me. Like how good was somebody in the ring? I was like, nah, bro, this is supposed to just be sweet, man. And Regal was really good here. Uh, edge hits a apron ddt i was shocked to see that in 02 like i'm like oh i thought that was like the new phenomenon but edge does it here and he hit a spinning wheel kick off the top rope which always impresses me i don't know why i feel like it's a hard move to uh to get off it's because big guys like you and me could never do that i think i could do a spinning wheel kick it won't look as pretty you think you could do that <laughs> no, you think you get no. here's the here's my actual question are you do you think you can get up after doing that no, yeah, <laughs> I'm rolling right to the floor for the 10 count, baby. <laughs> exactly. It's a, throw up that X. He's down, man. Down. Get that stretcher out here. Um, 
Edge goes for the spear, but Regal pulls the ref in. And during this, Nick Patrick checked the ring, and he checked Regal's tights. Nick Patrick has to be one of the worst referees in history. We get on the AEW referees, but by standard and definition, Starcade 97 and so much other bullshit, Nick Patrick is the worst. Bro. How did he not see Regal with the other set of brass knuckles in the tights? No idea. No idea. But and he uh, reached into the tights to grab them. That's an HR issue if I'm Regal. Yeah. But uh Danny McBride better play this guy in that in that Chris Hemsworth Hulk Hogan biopic. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um so, yeah, after – so the ref gets taken out. Regal grabs the brass knuckles from his trunks, uses them as a weapon. Edge stays down for it. This is back when you got the long dramatic count, so there weren't, like, the teases of the kick out. I, he got hit with him, and I'm like, yeah, he's done. He's cooked. Yep. And you get the slow three count. William Regal is your new intercontinental champion. Heck, yes. I, I give this a B-. minus. I thought it was fun. What? You give it the same score as that tag match? Yes, I felt like this one didn't uh, have as much time. There's a lot of shenanigans in it. Like, just a lot of, oh, Nick Patrick's got to reach in. Oh, he's got to do the spear. It, it was fine. Like, to me, I wanted to see these matches go a little bit longer. It's kind of my nitpick with them, if anything. Bro, but. bro this one is at least my blood type. Be positive. Be plus. No, if anyone needs blood, please contact yeah, Casey. Let me know if you need blood, guys. I got you. I got you. It's pricey, though. <laughs> uh, positively, he says... I'm trying to save money for a Bills jersey, bro. Those things are those things are expensive nowadays. Somebody sent you a good link. I'll talk to you about that after. Dudley's picked on Spike. Uh, Taz helped him out. It was uh, like a small guys with big heart story. <laughs> them being ex-WCW guys. E, you're not selling me on this. <laughs> not selling me. Edge was getting his first singles push. Yes, Derek, a big Edge fan, if you know. Edge, baby. I can just uh, picture Derek like rocking out to Rob Zombie. Uh, he probably did back then. Derek was a fan of Edge. Like when he first, like when he didn't even speak, like Derek was like, "Yes, yeah, my guy right there." And when he won in like 06, he was like, "Yeah." I watched and when Edge that. started talking, that didn't ruin it for Derek. <laughs> nope, he did not <laughs> care. He was happy he joined the Brood. Derek loved the Brood, all that stuff, man. He was into it. Uh, Christian over Edge, he says. Edge got the push for a long time before it clicked. Yeah, they they were forcing it with Edge, and then they finally, once he turned heel, I think it went, it felt right. I feel Regal wants the icy belt because he's European. Come on now, Azan. We can't be having regionalism here. Uh, Chad has joined us. What's up, Conrad? How much snow did you get in your area? Enough to cover my entire front porch, sir. Now Derek has to wear a Bills jersey tomorrow night. Derek, you heard the man. You heard what the people want, D. Heck yeah. Uh, no refs worse than Knox. I don't care. <laughs> uh, Regal pulled uh, a Walker and Pop uh, Pulp Fiction. Uh, Edge. I definitely was rocking out to the Rob Zombie. Derek said, "Laugh out loud." <laughs> um, did you, did you, under, though, did you understand Regal. the? He 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 meant Regal pulled a walk in in Pulp Fiction. Derek so he he had the Derek he had the, the brass knucks up his. <laughs> so after this we get uh michael cole in his best role ever trying to interview william regal and regal says i i did not use any weapons in this i've been blessed with the power of the punch and that's where that term started to be used i love it i love it regal regal was awesome man i think i think not enough people remember how great regal was as a heel yeah, dude. Regal was great even in WCW when he was Laura Steven Regal. Magnificent, bro. Um, yeah. I really wish he would have got a chance to run with the WWE title like in 08 when they were going to do it for a little bit for him. I think he would have been great. Next up, we have a special guest referee for this match. It's Jacqueline. Yeah. It's Jacqueline. And uh, she's coming out in her referee attire. This was uh, 02. Times were different, folks. Uh, she comes out strutting her stuff, and this is a women's championship match between Jazz and the current women's champion Tris Stratus. Yeah, I just now, want to I just want to preface this by apologizing for how 2002 WWF treated women. Um, go ahead, yeah, Casey. yeah, it was uh, 
it's a little problematic. A little, it's more than just a little problematic. Rob, what are you talking about? Up his donut. There are no donuts in here. Uh, <laughs> and E, you just completely, completely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the prison Jeez. pocket. <laughs> I've never heard that. Is that like a hot pocket or what does that mean? E? Message me in the DMs. It can be hot. <laughs> Miss Jackie, some people say Miss Jackie tied up rough shirt. Yes. Jazz, the no fun diva at the time. I love Jazz um, in this. So let me just, I, I guess I won't even really get into this match too much, but I love Jazz. Jazz, fun fact, was going to be my first ever interview for the podcast, but our schedules didn't work out. Uh, we had it all set up and everything, and then she couldn't make a date, and she tried to reschedule for a different date. I couldn't do it. So I have nothing but the utmost respect for Jazz. I kind of wish she got a better run in WWE that was uh, more memorable um, without me feeling like I have to force it to remember it. And Trish, bro, when I used to hear that music, good, good Lord, bro, good memories come back. As soon as I hear the blah, 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 it's just, it's on, bro. It's on. Yeah, Trish. Trish was awesome. She took she took crap and and she just she worked her butt off and got way better. Yeah, this was just this was a good match. And I know at one point a lot of people just saw Trish as like that eye candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Trish was seen as that eye candy, but I think Trish is one of the most like improved wrestlers of all time. Like that's what honestly. I'm saying. That's what that's what I'm saying. She took crap and like she was brought in just to be another, you know, piece of eye candy at that in that problematic time period. But she worked her butt off and and proved that she can go in the ring. So yeah, hats off to Trish. Nothing but respect for Stratus. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just saw something in the chat. Um so if you guys don't know, when I record these podcasts and stuff, if you're listening on the audio version, give us five stars. But when I'm recording live, I can see stuff in the chat before other people do. And Rob, you're definitely in trouble after this. We're going to have to talk. Um, people are saying this was the bra and panties era. Yes. And a year before this, Trish was barking like a dog in front of Vince. Like, no bueno, man. Just yep. crazy stuff that you'll never see again. Um, that That was what I was laughing at, if anybody didn't know. And I read that in like Vince's voice. Uh, yeah, you won't see Jazz and Braun panty matches. It wouldn't have worked with Jazz. Six says he won't say anything mean about Christian, but I will. CJ knows how I feel. Only good thing Christian uh, was ever good at was riding Edge's coattails. Damn. Come on now. Come on now. That's rough, man. That's rough, sick. Yeah, come on now. Uh, Rob was saying someone's... Yo, come on now, Chad. I didn't need an explanation about the donut. Um, I bet when Edge passed on that AW deal, Christian bent down, grabbed his knees, and gave him a huge sigh of relief. Come on now. Come on now. So, in this match, um, Trish, Trish, the story was Trisha's hand was hurt. I always wondered how they pulled it off to where she slammed the crate on her hand. I don't know. You're, you're the movie guy, Casey. How, how did they pull that off? They slammed a crate on her hands. There's no way you could seriously do that, though. It had to be a working crate box, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it probably wasn't a legit crate box. Like it was, it was some sort of gimmick crate. But yeah, I mean, it, it had sound to it. It sounded like it was like you know a little heftier when she slammed it down. But anyway, yeah, but you could you could literally just have someone off camera like slam something down to make the noise. This is true. Don't ruin professional wrestling for me, Casey. So Trish is holding her left hand. It is in like a, a brace kind of uh, for this match. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, okay, Jazz must be able to take advantage of this. And she's looking to in the entire match. Um, Jazz is very aggressive early on. But there's tension between her and Jacqueline because she beat Jacqueline to become the number one contender for this championship match. And... Eventually, There's something I need to talk about from the chat in a moment, but finish talking about the match. Okay. So she goes for the Stratisfaction Bulldog. She hits it, but Jazz kicks out. I don't know if that was supposed to happen, but it did. And Trish eventually gets the win with a Bulldog. Um, that was it. That was the match. They, yeah. were, they got more time than the women matches did back then. They were told sometimes the bell would ring, and they'd be like, go home. What? Yeah. But 
they respected treat uh trish lita tori like some people during this time they got a little bit more time but it gets worse later on like way worse so but go ahead casey you wanted to address something in the chat first of all i don't want to disrespect the women so i'll i'll i'll, I'll touch on this match um solid match i gave it a b minus me too uh, um so solid match between two really good female wrestlers um what i need to ch- touch on in the chat now is uh toxic talking about matt riding jeff's coattails okay first of all first of all matt hardy is the more talented hardy brother okay Preach. Jeff. All Jeff does is fall off of really tall things. That's all he does, okay? He can't wrestle. He cannot wrestle. All he did was he made his he found his shtick, which was climbing really tall things and doing a little flip off of it. Whoop did he do? Like I've seen you do it once, I've seen you do it a thousand times. It's it it's boring after a while. I'm sorry. In all like, oh I come out and baggy black jinko jeans and weird in no no jeff compared to matt is garbage okay cj knows how i feel about jeff hardy now listen i am going to partially co-sign this i definitely feel like um shout out to um the person who came in here with their spam you are uh blocked thank you shell whatever your name is so the matt hardy jeff hardy thing i feel the exact same way as you i always felt matt was the better of the two and matt doesn't get enough credit and i feel like when jeff gets propped up it's like well matt also assisted in that like he doesn't get the credit but when it's something wrong with jeff this is matt's fault too and you know they always want to blame matt i'm like no this dude's always been solid for the most part in the ring He's getting towards the end of his uh, years. And I think an impact when he finally got to show his like creative side with the broken mat, I was like, that was him who added years to their time in the spotlight. You know what I mean? I yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't Willow. I'll tell you that right now. It wasn't Willow. <laughs> Willow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to quote my uh, one of my favorites, uh, Solid Monster, Willow sucks. <laughs> like I never liked that. But what are you saying, Hassan? What song will be different? You think I'll be singing a different tune when Jeff's in AEW? No, I won't. I promise you that. I will be right here saying that Jeff Hardy sucks and AEW shouldn't have signed him. But it um, probably will happen. They're probably going to bring him in for one last nostalgia run with his brother. And, and I'm fine with that. That's I listen. I don't. I don't hate Jeff as much as Casey does. I'm cool. Like I was there when Jeff first won the uh, WWE title. I was happy for the dude. All right, but. I, if you ask me who I prefer, I'm going to say Matt over Jeff. That's just me, though. Uh, Six says, if the Bills go all the way this year, I'll mail you both a table so you can put yourselves through as a congratulatory gift. Hey, man, you let me know, man. I'll put it on camera. I don't care. I'll do. I will. I'll do the. the I'll do the spinning wheel kick through the table. <laughs> I'll show you that I can still get up afterwards. <laughs> Remember this. Remember this moment. <laughs> um. Let's see here. Uh, when Jeff shows up in March, uh, AW, the song will be different. Not not for Casey, I promise you that. Matt is definitely better, Derek said. Uh, what kind of memory, CJ? Depends on what we're talking about. I've said memories a lot throughout this. And if it's the Trish ones, we cannot speak on those. Uh, who Who's most over Hardy? Jeff. Ah. Yeah, we'll, we're, we we can debate this all day back and forth. Let's get into the uh, what I call the meat of this. What's the more here? popular film, Fast and the Furious or It's a Wonderful Life? Fast and the Furious doesn't mean it's the better film. Toxic. <laughs> so don't bring that don't bring that faulty logic to my door. <laughs> Why are you talking like that? That's your accent, my door. <laughs> the because uh, I'm highlight- angry. We get highlights of the Ric Flair, Mr. McMahon feud. Um, Greatest feud of all time. What? (laughs) Dude, I hated this. Like, I don't know why. It was like a weird way to. So at first I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. But then the more I saw Ric Flair on television as like an authority figure, I'm like, this sucks. Like, he was just bad. Like, I don't know. It just didn't work for me. Um. And I didn't like that they started calling Vince McMahon Mr. McMahon. 
I, I never want to call him Mr. McMahon. Am I the only person who feels like that? Like, I'm always like, dude, it's Vince McMahon. I'm not calling you Mr. Shit. Yeah. Austin beat your ass. Like, I don't have to call you that. Toxic World said Golden Feud <laughs> about <laughs> this. Uh, whoa. <laughs> I'm just, hey, hey, hey. You do what you got to do with Jackie. There's a match I got to show you on one of those European tours if you if you if you like that. Um, this is a street fight, Casey. Is it? Yeah, I don't really have a lot of. It, it was it a street fight? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> how how old these dudes were? How old during this time period? Late. They want to book themselves into a street fight. That's that's not an excuse, CJ. What? That's that's Vince. Booking himself into that, you know, he chose to have it as a street fight, and it was a malarkey street fight. Okay, we don't know who someone could have wrote this for them. I think, I think it also protected. So I have some notes on this. Two things I noticed in this were Rick Rick Flair appears to not be in his best form, and when I say that, I don't mean physical looks. I don't even mean what he's doing in the ring. Rick Flair looks like he lacks confidence throughout this match and i don't know that's something we picked up on from podcasts from like the undertaker talking about it and flair himself triple h i noticed it though i'm like why he just doesn't look ready you know what i mean throughout this yeah. match like he just doesn't look like he he doesn't look like the swagger of rick flair that he once had he looks like oh i'm just gonna go through well this, this was this was before uh evolution and before before trips uh reignited the uh the confidence i think uh shout out to someone saying this was the time wwe like blood <laughs> in reference to their recent articles about aew Funny. yeah yeah uh what song did rick flair come out to his classic he always comes out to that song uh toxic said they had to be in their 50s or 60s he was younger than sting is now this is true this is yep. true so that was the first thing I had noticed on it. Uh, the second thing was this. Uh, holy crap, bro. How big is Vince McMahon in 02 and 03? This dude is swole. Like, if he came up to me back then, me who isn't as big as I am now, <laughs> like high school version me, I would be scared to fight Vince McMahon. Like, this dude is swole. He looks like he will beat somebody's ass. Um, absolutely yeah. crazy. I mean, that's what the juice will do for you. OJ? Anyway, Ric Flair is bleeding in this match because it's a Ric Flair match. Uh, at one point during the match, Vince McMahon grabs a camera and is taking pictures of himself with Flair in front of uh, Mrs. Conrad Thompson and uh, the late Reed Flair. I thought that was a pretty cool moment, though, to see. And at one point, um, you see Vince McMahon doing wrestling holds to Ric Flair. And this is where I have a, a, a bitch, kind of. This is a street fight. You made it that for a reason. Why is Vince McMahon <laughs> holding Ric Flair in toe holds? Unless this was some kind of rib to amuse themselves? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, it, bro, he should have just been grabbing weapons and smashing Flair with them. That's all he should have been doing. Calling for Poop Stain Patterson to come help him. That yep. was it, bro. That was Vince McMahon. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this match didn't do it for me. <laughs> he says, gasp at Royd accusations. <laughs> um, so, whatever. I just didn't like that. Ric Flair uses the lead pipe that Vince used throughout the feud, if you watch the video package. Uh, McMahon later introduced it into the match here. Um, let's see here. He locked in the figure four leg lock and wins. That was, that was it. I was just kind of like... Ah, uh, you know, this was okay. It, it was, listen, it's a street fight. So you have a lot of leeway in this. And I didn't think Flair was as bad as I thought he was going to be. I just wish he looked like he had the confidence and showed more bravado uh, throughout. But I am I gave it a B plus. It was, it was what it was. You got it, the juice. You got to fight. Yeah, I gave it, I gave it a C plus. Okay. Um, Nick Patrick is backstage after this, Casey, being interviewed until Stephanie McMahon interrupts him. Um, Stephanie is talking about, my husband, Triple H, is going to win the Royal Rumble. And at this point, the act I know was played, but Triple H had a little bit of a break during this time. Um, and we see Stone Cold Steve Austin walk up behind her. And I know people put the what chance in the chat earlier. Bro, 
for goodness sakes. If I could end one fucking thing in pro wrestling today, it, it might be the what chance. Like if I had a penny and they were like, throw it in, you get one wish. The what chance would be definitely the chant that I would make go away. I don't know how you feel about them, but I, I hate the what chance. It's my least favorite thing about Stone Cold in this time period. Now, did you feel that way back then, though? Or were you digging this? Yeah, no, I, I felt that way back then. I, I remember like as a as a kid, like just being annoyed by the constant what what like it was it was fine like the first the first couple times but then like it just became like this all the time thing and it just like even back then as as a kid i was like this is dumb all just because of something that happened on a voicemail to scotty too hottie like this like this is the dude that like was talking like he's great on the mic, Mike, and like through the Attitude Era, like cut some awesome promos, and now like he's reduced to what, 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 like getting and getting the crowd into it. Like it's just, I hated it then, I hate it now. Right, as I said, BK, I wanted to show off the Lufez ability. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Uh, Toxic World said they showed young Charlotte. I didn't see Charlotte in this at all. Yeah, I didn't either, but. I think that that's Conrad Thompson's wife, actually, the one that they show. I can't remember her name off the top of my head now. But um, Narcolepsy Boy has joined us. What's up, Malik? Part of the six-pack. Showing some love, brother. Uh, Six said, I always said Jeff was better in-ring performer and Matt is better on the mic. See, I would disagree, Sick. Jeff, the only thing Jeff has is jumping off of, doing flips off of high things. That's it. (laughs) <laughs> Toxic said, not the best McMahon. We get two people putting what? I see Mr. Pro Wrestling. Come on now. KJ, what's going on? What's going on? Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you guys are in here, make sure you leave a like or a five-star review for us on audio versions. We greatly appreciate that. Casey, I'm going to bring up the sign right now. You said you wanted to bring up the sign. I don't know if you wanted it before this match, during the... I'll uh, talk uh, about it. And the reason, the reason I wanted to, what I saw happen in the front row was a fan ha- was holding up a sign that said, you suck. you suck. Just this neon sign and it had you suck written on it. And then very quickly you see security come and take it away from him. And the reason I want to bring this up is because over the last few months, there's some dill hole that has his own podcast uh, that uh, used to run around with a tennis racket that uh, used to talk about how how big and bad wrestling was back in the day, and like oh, because I because AEW took away took away a, a sign recently, um, and, and yeah, I'll say Jim Cornette, Dillhole McGee, uh, that racist prejudice prick. Uh, he uh, yeah, he talked a lot of crap about AEW for for taking that sign away from that fan. And he he all he like oh back in the day like the signs this was WWF in 2002 taking away a sign that said you suck. So spare me your your anecdotes about how tough and great wrestling was back in the day, okay? Corny. That's all I have to say about that. Dairy Queen, damn it. Yeah. Double cheeseburger. Jim Cornette's very he has great things to say. And then there's just there's things that I like and there's things that I don't like with him. But um I like I said, I think when Cornette wants to relive the times, I think he wants to go back to when he watched the wrestling in like the, the 60s to 80s is what like he wanted those crazy times, but neither here nor there. Them taking away that you suck sign, absolutely ridiculous. And the guy who was all like super muscular and diesel and he felt all big and bad. I was like, dude, I can't believe these people didn't boo him or like stick up their middle fingers at him after like, dude, you suck. Come on. I I, I, I agree. It's ridiculous that a sign that said you suck got taken away, especially because that was like the big thing with Kurt Angle's theme song. Like it was just starting out at that time and like yeah, so it was weird that, but it just it just caught my eye and made me immediately think of how Cornette always talks about. Well, back in back in the day, oh yeah, and there and to be honest, there were a bunch of signs. You got to find them. Some of them don't make any sense. Some of them are super inappropriate. 
just just go find them when you're watching these old shows and just look for signs and you'll start laughing. Yeah. Um, next match is the undisputed championship match between The Rock and Chris Jericho. At this time, they're trying to establish Chris Jericho. He is the only man to beat The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night. He still brags about that to this day. Yep. To this day. And uh, rightfully yeah. so. Yeah, absolutely. And Jericho was on top of his game. So we get a highlight uh, package of all this stuff again. WWF was great for that back in these days. I never liked how Jericho was treated throughout this run, though, Casey. Like they, so this was the first time I ever noticed somebody getting, I I like to call it macho man, CM Punk, where they let someone else overshadow them, but they're probably telling you, like, no, you're the champ. You're the best. We're looking, you got the belt still. Look, you got it. 100%. But they're really promoting someone else because they're getting ready to have someone take it from them. And in all honesty, they ended up playing another person in all of this, too, if you look down the line later. But we we won't get into that until we do a review for that show. They really um, did this. I like Rock and Jericho working together, though. I thought they had great matches in late 01 till this time period. Uh, I agree. Hop in, brother. I Two of my all-time favorites. And I was I was there for this feud back in the day. And uh, I completely agree with what you said, though. Um, even though Jericho had the two two big belts on his shoulders, uh, he definitely was not the man throughout this feud. It was very clearly The Rock. And, uh, yeah. But it was still cool, like I said. Both of them great on the microphone. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, and the match itself was really good, like, the match itself, they they worked very well together. They worked very well together. Right. He said he loved Jericho twirling with the belts. Uh, absolutely. And I really think they could have made this better. And I don't know if they hated Jericho or if they hated the idea of the WCW championship being broadcast. I don't know what it was, dude. Yeah. I, I can never put uh, a finger on why they did what they did and how they did. One of my like favorite that. moments, though, I, I, I always remember, like, at the start of this match, the – Oh, in the yeah. rock's face, in the rock's face. Oh man, it's so good. It was, dude. You know what sucked though? The breakdown. I wrote down Jericho and Rock's moves that I hated during this time. The breakdown absolutely sucked. It was nothing but the stroke, like with Jeff Jarrett. I hated that for Jericho. He could have definitely just kept using the lion salt or the uh, the lion yeah. tamer or the walls of Jericho, whatever you want to call it. The Rock sharpshooter. It's absolutely it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in this match. He's lying. These things are god awful. <laughs> like they're just cr- legs are crossed. Rock's not sitting on your back. He's just looking like ah. It just I don't know, man. He started doing it after they did that screw job finish in '98 at Survivor Series. Whatever, bro. In this match, we get interference from Christian. This is starting to show the friendship that would eventually happen between Chris Jericho and Christian. The fellow Canadians came out. That's right. Uh, well, Christian was from Tampa at this time, remember? <laughs> yeah. He was trying yeah. to distance himself from his brother, Edge. And uh, we we get a rock bottom spot through the table. This was every Attitude Era match right here. It was the table spot. You go through the table. I'm going to do your finisher. I'm going to do the people's elbow to you. It, it was exactly the same stuff. Rock kips up, ref bumps. All that stuff was in this. Near falls. But... Here's what I'm talking about, Casey. I'm just going to go right to the finish. This is why Jericho looked fucking weak, and I hated it. Jericho exposed a turnbuckle, so he throws Rock into the turnbuckle, right? He then low blows the Rock, rolls him up, and puts his feet on the ropes. He needed that He needed that triple stamp of, of cheating to, to make sure he could beat the Rock. You know what would have been more effective? I, if he just beat him. I agree. I agree, but this is, I mean, yeah, I, it's like you said, he wasn't, they needed to keep the rock looking big and bad. Um, like the rock is, and this was a former WCW guy that, yeah, I mean, who was, let's be honest at the, at the time, smaller and, even though he had the belts, even though, like like you said, they had the belts on him, but he wasn't the guy. Yeah, it just, 
I don't know. This could have been better. Like there were some of these matches could have been great and they were just good, is how I feel. Uh, I gave this a B plus. Great effort. I just didn't like how, how they booked Jericho, really. I gave it a B plus plus. Nice, nice. Uh, Azan says Jericho had a better run in 08 with the world championship. I will agree with that. Uh, what about you, Casey? What do you think? 08? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Un Americans in, in, later in the year. Yes, that did happen. Uh, Rock had terrible form on the sharpshooter. He screamed more than his opponent. He did. He did. <laughs> and Derek comes in with a uh, cornet line. He's a heel. <laughs> um, yes. But now, Casey, it is time for everybody's favorite match. The Royal Rumble. I can't do well, it with Howard Finkel. I, it was pretty good, man. That was pretty really? good. Yeah, I've been practicing. I've been watching a lot of Doc Gallows doing that impression on a podcast. But, dude, I missed the Fink. That was the first note I wrote from this. I love Howard Finkel. He sounded so official and just made it feel real. Like, ladies and gentlemen, a competitor's... Uh, what is it? Eliminated when both feet touch the ground and they will have to go to the back. Yeah, bull, bullshit, Howard. <laughs> but it just felt official and I loved it. Um, in this case, he, number one, number two. Number one is the man with the ass. My man Rikishi coming out uh, with yep. the old music. No more, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad. He was back to, you look fly today. <laughs> and I loved it. It was great. And then Gold Dust was back, bro. I marked out for this back then. Little yep. did we know he was going to be on a great effing run after this. Yeah, it was fun to. It was a fun surprise to see him return at the Rumble, no less. Uh, one, of, it's one of the one of the things I love about the Royal Rumble match is seeing those, getting those surprises. I am such an advocate of not announcing entrance ahead of time. You and uh, Renee Young. <laughs> I won't say it, her government name, but you and Renee Young, both. It's so dumb to – because part of the fun is the countdown, the 10, 9, 8, and then just waiting and hearing whose music hits and be like, oh, okay. Like, it's just – it's ridiculous to, like, spoil that ahead of time. I've always hated Royal Rumbles when they, A, announce who's in it, and B – announce when they're coming into the match. Yeah. Like that was always dumb to me. It's one thing if you like to like announce who's starting it, but like, that's it. That's all I want to know. I don't want to know anyone else's numbers. Like, I don't want to know who else is in it. Right. Um, I think toxic world said this is his favorite rumble. Uh, Azan said gold us return here. <laughs> Positively said you look flat today. Uh, they announced all 2,092 surprises. Laugh out loud. I'd rather be surprised. Agreed. 100%. 100%. Uh, you, you know who was not a surprise that I forgot about all in this match? Number three, the big boss man is back. Uh, he had a very short run here, but he comes out um, just doing his thing. Next, we have The Undertaker, who's the next big entry out here, and he came in kicking ass. I, that, I don't know if he had the Limp Biscuit theme. I watched the uh, Peacock version of this, and he came out to Roland. Yeah. And, yeah, dude, he, he was just beating ass. He eliminates everybody. He gets the uh, diesel spot, as we like to call it in uh, our, our old age now. He, he eliminates everybody. And then who comes out but our favorites? Do-do-do. The Hardys. Yeah. Uh, Matt Hardy comes out first. Lita tried to help him. This is back when Matt and Lita were – a precious couple in the WWE, something that people could hold on to, view as real love in the professional wrestling business. You hear this, Derek? This is this is why I, I get upset when I talk about this. That was viewed yep. as real love. Yep, until um, Matt got hurt. Yeah, yeah. So they jump the Undertaker. Jeff comes out, and then they should have known better. That loser listened to Rob Zombie. <laughs> oh, Derek, Edge, the snake oh, in the Edge. grass. <laughs> I was like, I was gonna say, damn, what did Derek do? He said Edge. Um, it probably wasn't his choice either to get that. Paul Hayes was probably like, this guy's cool. <laughs> like, you gotta use this. Um, Jeff Hardy comes out, bro. Team Extreme put the boots to Undertaker, and I loved it. I was like, good. Undertaker's a new heel as he just recently cut his hair. Um, 
I love this spot though, where you think, oh, they're doing the twist of fate. Undertaker takes a shitty neck breaker instead yeah. of doing yeah. the twist of fate the right way. Jeff hits the swanton. He gets back up and stumbles into the corner, and they go for the poetry in motion, but Jeff gets caught and eats shit to the floor. Get off me. And uh, Matt Hardy gets thrown out. They try to like fight. So going back to once you're eliminated, you're supposed to go to the back. Well, the Hardy boys were being dicks and they decided, no, we're not doing that. Fight this guy. And afterwards, Maven comes out from uh, Tough Enough. That's and right. Let me tell you, I've waited for this moment, bro. Maven is the shit. Maven should have been pushed. Maven should have been the WWF champion. I'm telling. All right, I'm going too far. But yeah. Maven was the shit, bro. I love. I Maven. like Maven too, but mm, that's a little far. <laughs> listen, his theme song was badass. I love it. I can still listen to it to this day, and a smile will just come across my face. Just crazy, dude. So he was the tough enough winner from the first ever tough enough show on MTV. He comes out, bro, and he was hyped. Maven's one good thing that he could do perfectly at any time was a drop kick. Bro, when Undertaker was distracted by Lita, he pie faces her off the ropes. You cannot do this shit today. Trust me. He drop kicks Undertaker in his back, and Undertaker gets hung up underneath the rope almost. And I was like, geez. He eliminates him, and Taker's face sold this, bro. Sold it. It's a great Rumble moment. Yep. Yep. Maven still in the 2002 Rumble to this day. <laughs> Technically speaking, yes, but uh, we all know what happened. Maven ended up getting lambasted with a chair, cut open. Maven actually has a great story about this, telling about how uh, he couldn't, he was allergic to aspirin. So they wanted him to take it so that he would bleed a lot more. He was like, Oh, I can't take a baby aspirin and stuff. I'm allergic to it. Undertaker was like, I know another way to get you some blood. He passes him like liquor in his bag, and he was like, start drinking up. And Maven was like, what the hell am I going to say? I guess I got to do it. And he started drinking. The Undertaker takes this man. I'm just jumping all over the place in this, but he beats Maven's ass up the concourse and throws his head through a popcorn machine, like the stand for it with the glass. Yeah. Maven goes through it, bleeding in the popcorn. Not hungry anymore, folks. Even a fat dude, not hungry anymore. Taker's eating bloody popcorn. Disgusting. It's, it's yeah, it's brutal to watch, but it was fun. <laughs> Especially for the state that we live in now. It's like, eh, wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do that. But um, I thought this was really, really fun. I, I, I like that they gave Maven that moment. I don't know whatever happened to him and why it just didn't work out. I can never put my finger on it. I think it's just bad injury, bad time, and then they kind of forgot about him, and they were like, you know what? Yeah, we can do with that. Yeah. I mean, he was – I I liked Maven, bro. I remember watching Tough Enough back in the day. Like, I was a huge fan, but he was a little, like – he was a little bland. Let's be honest. What? Do you, have you not heard this theme? The theme tells his story. I'm, I'm selling here. May, I thought Maven just deserved an opportunity. I don't think he ever really got the chance to shine. Do you know what I mean? Like, he was always in there, like, where it was like, oh, if we beat Evolution as a team, or oh, if we do this. And it's like, dude, give Maven this shot, bro. But he never had it. So, too bad, too sad. Maven, you're great, though. Uh, and to be honest, and he said he hates that theme song. He was like, I was never really a big fan of it. I'm like, you heal. How could you? <laughs> um, you know who else had a badass theme at this time? Christian. Christian. At last. Christian always had banger themes, bro. What a little douchebag. He comes out here, and he's just such a little slime ball that you hate him. Um, we get highlights, like I said, of him going through the popcorn machine, Taker eating popcorn, which is very unsanitary. Um, and then we get another pop of the night. Listen, I know it's bad nowadays, but I'll tell you when the guy oh, the yeah. music hit, bro, those people popped. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I always pop for the, for the Godfather. When that music hit, bro, the... His train of friends. <laughs> this sounds like Barney. What do you mean train of friends? <laughs> I mean. He went back three times. This had to be the largest friend train of all time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure the next person's going to have to walk through this group of people because 
He's taking forever to get to the ring. Right. Oh my goodness, dude. That was that was great. And to be honest, he's always been in like Royal Rumbles, but we all know Godfather ain't there for the long run in these. He's like, yeah, no. I'm gonna do a couple moves and I'm getting my ass on out of here. Yep. Um collecting my paycheck and home. heading home. Yeah, this was him after being the good father, too. So this worked. Like people were happy to see him return back to this gimmick. Next note I have in here, Casey, is Saturn was in the WWE in 2002. I don't remember this at all. When Wearing I saw him, cow like, print. Huh? Wearing cow print. Yeah, dude, I do not remember Saturn. I remember Moppy, but I don't know if this was this time period. I thought it was before this. Moppy was the last thing. Like, that's the last thing I remember him doing. Yeah, I can't remember. Like, why? How he was still around in 2002. Yeah, if this was on a, if this was on like one of those quizzes that we do, I would absolutely be done. Like I yeah. have had no clue about that. Uh, next out is Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he does what he does. He eliminates everybody, beats their ass, uh, and, and then perches himself up on the turnbuckles and looks at his watch and waits. Right. Uh, Thomas Poster says Maven has been MIA since that day. Maven has popped up on some indie shows recently, and he was on the Bump. Um, <laughs> take her threw her off the threw her off a stage and mushed her ain't nothing to him terrible all up on the train red light district uh everybody is happy to talk about the train it looks like uh the undertaker and apa took too many rides on the train <laughs> perhaps uh yep d said digging through ditch through the ditches uh i agree with that i hate when they announce the entrances beforehand how big of a shock would it be the whole Mickey James showing up with the Impact title thing had they not announced it? Agree. 100%. 100%. They're trying, they're, trying to, they're trying to get people to order Peacock. But I, I, you would think the Rumble would be good enough for them to order it, you know? I think there's plenty. I, I don't think that the division is is big enough for it to to merit spoiling the moment, though, CJ. The, but I don't they're trying think, to capture that big Impact audience, Casey. 100%. Yeah. That huge, huge, huge. Those 20 people. Um, and so it's just I, what I'm saying is the people that watch Impact, I think, already are going to be watching the Rumble. So that's my point. I don't think the division is as big as they think it is to where spoiling that moment is really worth it. It, sh right. it would have been a much bigger moment, as Sit just said, with if we didn't know, and all of a sudden, holy shit, the Impact Knockouts champion is in the Rumble. And she has her belt around her waist. Like, what? Like, that would have been epic. Right. But instead, they spoil it ahead of time. And so when she does come out, it's just going to be like, okay. Unless they wanted people talking so that they're like, well, now we don't what know would be, to show up. What would be epic is if she comes out carrying a garbage bag. So at this That would time, be amazing. At this time, we are being told that Sandra worked a lot of metal and velocity. Um. Uh, <laughs> Good to know. Good to what know. What the hell were those? Those were like just Saturday. I know, shows. I know. I know. I, I know. think that was by the time we were too cool for like the Saturday morning or Saturday 100%. night wrestling. I'm 100%. like, yeah, I'm going out. Peace, bro. I'm going to play basketball. So next out, one of my favorites. Hello, ladies. Maybe the at the time, screw that guy nowadays. He's a nut job. I, I listen. You're talking about the man. I'm talking about Val Venus. That was my guy. Yeah, he's a great wrestler too, man. He he was jacked here, bro. Like another. Oh, they like, they showed the ladies enjoying him. Yeah, Val Venus comes out. Um, favorite Val Venus line of all time. Still SummerSlam '98. So this is the Big Apple. Well, I came, I saw, then I came again. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Oh, sorry. Put the kids to bed before this one. This is labeled explicit, by the way. Um, he comes out. One of my other favorites during this time period, Test. That yo, how long did they talk about Test having immunity from that Survivor Series? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Test was saying that shit when he was in ECW. You know, I got immunity, right? <laughs> yep, immunity. Damn. Yeah, I'm like if everyone forgot. I have immunity. <laughs> You're supposed to care about me. That was like the last thing they ever gave him of, of meaning. I do. I, I I always felt so bad for him. Yeah, they screwed him out of his main event spot. He was in a top spot, and they just took him out of it for no reason, in my opinion. Yep. 
El Terrible. So then we have Triple H. Now, the last time we saw Triple H, he was doing the two-man power trip with Austin. They were both heels. Well, things have flipped. Triple H made his big Madison Square Garden return. He is a baby face now. And honestly, going into this, Casey, did you want – I wanted Triple H to win. Like, he was the, my pick. Like, I'm like, it's got to be Triple H, bro. Back, back then, yes. And little did we know what this would be, start to lead to. Not fully yet. I think it happens more so at the end of the year, but – Triple H comes back and he does the damn thing. And it, it was cool, man, to see him back. I was just happy somebody came. I never thought someone could come back from a quad tear. Like, that was fast to me. I'm like, dude, it was less than a year and he's back already. Yeah. yeah. And I remember back. that moment when he returned. Like, I remember. That was huge. The jean jacket. over The, the jean uh, jacket, yeah. Over the leather jacket. That was yep. a beast. I don't know, man. That such good stuff, dude. Um. And during this, these two square up and they're ready to fight. They're brawling with each other. And I just, I just want to say, I just want to add. I know I said that the Godfather took forever with his entrance, but oh my God, Triple H's entrance in this takes forever. I should have gone back and timed it. I, I, it was definitely more than the two minutes in between, like entrance. Six said the only lasting memory I have of maybe is when Brock debuted at 5 a.m. Damn. Yep. I remember I remember Spike Dudley and Al Snow being victims too in that. Um Sean Morley can F all the way off these days. <laughs> oh my Rob God. knows. Rob knows. Val Venus sisters, ex-wife of Edge FYI. <laughs> yes, is on. That is true as well. Um so they're battling each other, and next up. We need a superhero in this, Casey. Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. And I love Hurricane. Hurricane was one of my favorites back then. Always provided entertainment. I thought he was solid in the ring. That dude blocked me on Twitter. Well, we know why, though. That Because he was, he, I don't know. He, wasn't, he was having I a rough agree with him. He was having a rough night. Yeah. So hurricane comes out and he goes for a choke slam on triple h and austin and i love this moment bro where they it's an iconic grab- moment huh iconic moment bro he grabs them both by the throats and then they look at each other like what the hell i'm not going for this and they just toss him out with the cape on and the cape goes over his face i was like i was praying the cape didn't fall off when they did it because i couldn't remember if it did i'm like don't let the cape fall off please. i i just know what I was thinking during this moment was I just know that JR really wished a different superhero was in the Rumble. I know that. What superhero would that be, Casey? <laughs> Blackula. <laughs> Blackula. Shout out to uh, Deadlock Talk. I have to reference them for that. One of my like most uh, funny, funny things, man, to just see in here. Um, so after this... We get another big surprise, Casey. And this was probably my favorite out of all the returns in this Rumble, just because I never thought this would happen. You hear the theme song of Mr. Frickin' Perfect, Kurt Henning. The dude still has it, bro. He could smack the gum. Bro, just think, 10 years before this, he was never supposed to wrestle again. Like, after he lost to Brett, never supposed to wrestle again. And this dude's coming out in 02 like, yeah, I'm about to kick some ass in this. I still got this. Bro, Mr. Perfect is an all-time favorite of mine. I still, to this day, as a 33-year-old man, I will be chewing gum when I leave the office at night, and I will spit it in the air and swat it with my hand, <laughs> a la Mr. Perfect. I To this day, I, I it, every time I'm chewing gum when I walk out of the office, I do it. I'm, he must be wondering if he was chewing blue chew. He might have been because he, he came in here ready to go. Uh, yeah. Mr. Perfect should have had a better run in WWE during this time. I agree, especially after this performance. I really thought he should have been. Uh, I want to go ahead. I want to point out um, maybe we'll get to it. Are you going to talk about like Kurt coming in and stuff? Like, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get okay. To I, I just want to talk about something that Mr. Perfect did at the end of the match. Okay. Uh, Mr. Perfect, one of the best ones to never win the world championship. I can agree with that. Chucky 100%. in the Rumble from uh, Mr. Charles Lee Ray himself. How you doing, Chuckaroo? Good to see you in here. Uh, Azan says, Mr. Perfect, two years off of his great feud with the perfect one, Sean Stasiak. 
Wow. Wow. Uh, do it now. Do it good. How about, how about the how about the West Texas Rednecks? Listen, I'm not gonna lie, that song was rap is crap. <laughs> I like country music. <laughs> um, look it up, kids, if you don't know. So Mr. Perfect comes out and he's kicking ass. Countdown goes down. Kurt Angle joins the fun. The same sign that the fans took. This is when I was going to mention it. When they were saying, you suck, they took a fan sign, but they're chanting, you suck at Kurt Angle. Why don't you just kick everybody out the arena? Huh? Huh, Mr. Yeah. Security Man? Piece yeah. Mr. Garbage. Mr. Security Man. He just starts wrangling everyone. Like, hey, out the door. Out the door. <laughs> hey, you, who said it? You, get over here. You're done. You're done, pal. Call call your mother right now. Um. <laughs> So he comes in and whatever, dude. He's out. Kane comes out. Or no, excuse me. Big Show comes out first. Yeah. And this is like Big Show's return to like, okay, he's back. I don't know if he was gone for a little bit or what happened here. May, no, I'm thinking of a different Rumble. I think that was 01. And this one, he comes out. He's just annihilating people. Why didn't they book him like this all the time back then, bro? Big Show was booked like. I don't know. I hated what they used to do with him. They would get hot and cold on him all yep. the time. Stupid. Absolutely didn't like that. And Kane comes out, and I thought these guys were going to have a longer run with each other, but instead we get the, I'm big, you're big, and <laughs> let's fight. And yep. they both eventually get dumped out. Uh, Angle eliminates Kane. Rob, I did not know Rob Van Dam was in this, but when Rob Van Dam's music hit, another big pop. Yeah. How did you not put the title on this dude in O2? Will forever boggle my mind. Him, Kane, Booker T later on. Like, how did you not put the belts on these guys? People go crazy for him. Booker T's number 30. Booker T at this time, whatever, bro. <laughs> whatever. Booker T's out there. And he was the WCW champion in a main event feuds with everybody. And they book him as like the upper mid card guy. <laughs> like, yep. what? So. Yep. Whatever, dude. Booker T comes in. This is what pissed me off. Rob Van Dam got to do all this cool shit. He got to hit the frog splash. He got to do the rolling thunder. Get the fuck out of here. What? Booker T just comes in. Get out of here. Dude, Triple H pedigrees him. Omen of things to come. And Booker T just dumps him like a sack of shit. And I was like, really, bro? That's how we eliminated Rob Van Dam? Really? Yep. Oh, my God. Building up Booker. Yeah, build he, had to, he had to make he had to make some space so that he could do his spin rooney in the in the rumble. Yeah, to get Stone Cold spin rooney right out the ring when he got with the hit with that stunner. Um, so Booker T then gets eliminated by Austin. Stupid. So we're down to the final four at this point, Casey. This is my favorite moments. I love to look at these. It's Triple H, Kurt Angle, Stone Cold, and Mister Perfect. What the hell, bro? You cannot go. Who would have predicted like Mr. Perfect would be in the final four of this rumble? Calling it. Yeah. Um, and I don't is this where you want to jump in or you want to jump in when it's the three? When it's the three, yeah. Okay. So during this, we're and you know, if you're if you're taking straws on this, you're like, dude, perfect's out next. He's gotta be. Nope, it was Stone Cold who got dumped out next, and I loved it. Yep, I loved it. It was, it's it's amazing because everyone just he was I love it's the genius thing that WWE does on occasion where they uh they show some brilliance and this is what this is what keeps people this is what keeps people attached to them. It's that abusive relationship. They show a little bit of love and then uh you know um but uh because it was genius. Because everyone expected it to come down to like Stone Cold and you know Triple H probably, um, but no, they're like, no, nah, get out of here. We're we're going down to we're we're keeping it at perfect angle in, in Triple H. And I feel like after he went back to being a uh, what do I want to say here when he went back to being like a baby face again, Stone Cold was never the same. Like I feel like they treated him like he was less than. If that makes sense, like he was, he was always like that upper mid card. They weren't going to put him back in the main events. They were ready to move on. Yeah, I mean, it was it it was the time they were they were ready to move on. And, and, <laughs> and speaking of moving, was- speaking of moving on, we we forgot to mention earlier in the night your boy showing up from D- WWE New York. 
Oh, WWE yeah, Shawn Michaels. He, he actually seemed like... In his Texas button-up. Love it. I wish I could get one of those somewhere. But Sean, listen, he's never been the one for style, all right? So no, Sean, no. Sean, though, looked like he was in a great state there, though. I think this is where the, the button... It was New came. York. Yeah. When someone's... That was uh, the state he was in. No. <laughs> the, the state of mind. Oh. Uh, we all know he had his demons and stuff back then. But I think here, I could see it. Like, he was a different person. He wasn't as risque. He was seemed like he was kind of like, yeah, yeah, things are good. Happy to watch this. Cool. You don't want to, like, Sean didn't sound bitter. He didn't sound angry. He didn't yeah. sound like he was going to do a dance or anything and try to steal the show. He was like, no, I'm cool with this, man. Do your thing. I'm good. But anyway, and I think this is where they get the idea, like, hey, maybe he's ready to come back. Maybe we can use him. And he looked good. He looked like he was in good shape. It just worked. So final three are in, Casey. Take over here, bro. So I just want to mention, I think when you're watching this match, you can see that there's a moment where Mr. Perfect is supposed to be eliminated. Yes. Kurt comes for that clothesline to Triple H. Triple H ducks out of the way, and he hits Mr. Perfect at the ropes. And there's a little bit of a screw-up where, where Perfect doesn't flip over the rope and, and el get eliminated. So there's a bit of a miss up, mess up. What I love about Kurt Henning is that you can you could see him speaking to the other two to get back on track, to make it natural, to still keep it looking natural. Because we've seen screw-ups in the past in Rumbles where a dude's supposed to go flip get flipped over, but he doesn't get the momentum, he doesn't get the angle, and he does he comes back into the ring. And they just kind of like and they do it again and just to eliminate. We've actually seen it where it's even worse, where the dude who's supposed to get eliminated just kind of like jumps over the rope then at that point. Like, well, I'm supposed to be out of here at this point. See ya. Not oh, Mr. Oh. Perfect. Mr. Perfect takes command of a young Kurt Angle in Triple H, who is a who is a seasoned vet at this time, but Mr. Perfect's the one that takes command of that ring. And he's like, this is what we're doing to get me out of here, to get back on track to where it's just the two of you. You could see that he, he, he was talking to Kurt in his ear as they did the moves, and you could see he looked over his shoulder at one point when Triple H is on the ground, and he says something to Trips, and Trips gets up and makes it happen and stuff. Like, I just wanted to point that out. Mr. Perfect was amazing at the craft. Like, he is one of the all-time greats, and it needs to be talked about more. He was absolutely perfect. And I'm glad we got to see the perfect plex, too. I think that made it even better when Kurt ducks down. He's like, screw it, I'm hitting it on you. And shout out to Kurt, yeah. too, because Kurt and those guys could have probably been, like, jerks and been like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm a main eventer. Why would I take your finish in this? You know what I mean? Why would I make myself look weak? And Kurt's probably like, hell yeah, let's do this. Go ahead, bro. This is cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and he just does it, man. So, uh, hats off to them. And I forgot to mention, Stone Cold came back in the ring with a chair and waffled everybody and just to get the fans, like, happy to give them a pop. And, uh, yeah, so that happened. So Mr. Perfect doesn't go out right away, but eventually he does um, get tossed out. Uh, Triple H takes him out. And we are down to the final two. Oh, by the way, Mr. Perfect managed Triple H in, like, 1996. Crazy, crazy. Um, we are down to the final two. It is Triple H and Kurt Angle. This doesn't last as long as I would like. Yeah. Guys, but I they, felt they're like... at that point yet where they're like, let's tell a story with the final two. To me, there's different stories. You could do like the three on three. It's like the old guys, new guys, or some type of uh, thing that you can visually see. Like, oh, I see what they're doing here. It's going to be the guys who are all former partners or something. And then there's the story of sometimes young versus old, new generation, old school generation. Um, sometimes it might be WCW versus WWE. Then there's the final four. I love those stories where it's like, oh, it's down to Luger, Brett, Sean, and Fatu or whatever. And there's usually one guy who it's like, wait, how did he last all the way till the end? I know. Um, like, how did how did Sean last there? Don't don't do this right now. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. That's a different episode. It is. We will have that one day though. That's definitely going to be people's favorite. We get down to Triple H and Kurt Angle. Bro, Triple H clotheslines the shit out of this man. Kurt sold this like a champ, bro. Yeah. And Triple H gets the win here. I 
I love Royal Rumbles. To me, it's hard to have a bad Royal Rumble match. A minus. A minus for me. I'll agree with that. A minus. If this is this is this is one I hadn't watched in a while. Um, but it's definitely up there as far as rumbles go. And yeah, it's just it's got a good mix of you know, like returns and up and comers and established stars. So this was a lot more fun than I expected. Overall rating for the show, Casey, I'll go to you first. I kind of want to hear what you think, and then I'll give my um, overall rating for the show is I'll I'll say uh, I'll say a B overall for the show. Same, I have the exact same. Yeah, it was it wasn't as uh, horrible as I thought it would be, but I do still feel that 2002 was kind of the beginning of the the downslope for them, slowly but surely. Yeah, but I still think this was a solid like. Overall, solid show. The 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 Rumble match itself really saved it. Um, yeah, listen, when we get to Survivor Series and SummerSlam, I think those are two of the best shows that the company's ever done, like top 20 shows of all time, easily. Yeah. So lots of fun here. Um, Casey, where can people follow you? If they want to talk maybe movies, pro wrestling with you, Jeff Baby, Hardy's matches. Baby Briggs 21, you see it on the screen. That's my that's my handle for all social media. Give me a follow on Twitter. Give me a follow on uh, Instagram. I uh, I like to I like to talk crap about about stuff on Twitter. So that's fun. Come argue with me or agree with me. I'm Stan. currently doing I'm currently doing a rewatch of the James Bond films, and it's really hard right now because I'm in the Roger Moore era and he's dog crap. As James Bond, he's dog crap. So, yeah. Come come on Casey's Twitter and talk some movies with him. Um, be prepared to argue, though, like he said. He's, he's always down to uh, get into some heated debates over things. So, with that being said, if you guys want to get some cool merch like the merch I have on here, you guys can go to our link down below, drum.io slash EPW show, and you guys can put in What For Apparel or T Public and get yourself some everything pro wrestling gear. Links are all there for you. Design your own shirt. You can get whatever color you want. Whatever you want, put it in. Get a mug for somebody. Who cares? Just buy something that says everything pro wrestling and tell your friends about it. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with an AEW Dynamite review with Derek. Uh, that should be lots of fun. We just found out that we are going to have uh, a big return on the show uh, for the one and the only Mr. Cody John Rhodes. Oh, you're talking about John Moxley. John, okay. John Moxley will be there as well. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, you know what? Let's not let's not take the chance to miss. Cody Rhodes will be on the show as well. So we're going to be talking about all those beautiful. I knew you that. had both of them lined up. <laughs> you do. You do know that. Um, so. We're going to be talking about that. And on Thursday, I know the WWE 2K22 news is going to be coming out. Um, I might make my video a little bit later. I swear to you, I cannot wait until I have my Thursdays back again. And I can tell you guys what was holding me back from doing this for so long. I absolutely hate it, though, because it's like ruining a lot of like when news drops for me. And I'm like, dang, it, I could have did a video during that time. But we'll try to talk some real WWE quick, 2K. real quick. The comments E. Yes, I am burying Roger Moore like some jobber. He is the worst of all the Bond actors. The thing is, he what's not only is he the worst depiction of Bond, he's in some of the most outlandish movies. Sure, he's got some cool, like memorable things as far as like Christopher Lee as Scaramanga in the one movie. You have Jaws, the 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 henchman with the metal teeth. So you get some like memorable things from his run of films. But overall, it's just absolute garbage. Roger Moore is trash. And I would say that to his estate's face, respectfully. Thick, I know it was a blow to me when Sean Connery passed away. It just, yeah, uh, he's he's the GOAT Bond, in my opinion. The originator um, set the standard for what the character should be. So I love Sean Connery. I loved him in, I love him in so many things. Uh, I mean, he was... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is one of my all-time favorite films. So I, I love Connery. Um, WW2K22 can't have my money. Listen, man, I'm trying to tell you. If you guys haven't seen the rumored cover, this is it. Rey Mysterio, Booyaka Booyaka. That's the uh, the main one there. And if you're getting deluxe, that's what it'll look like. I, I think the cover looks pretty badass. I love Rey Mysterio. 
Uh, rumor is we're getting a 96 Rey Mysterio pack as well for the Starcade version of him. Um, my fingers are crossed that we get Jushin Liger. If that's true, bro, I need this. I need this. Um, but Rob, yeah. thoughts on the Pierce era, the Pierce Brosnan? Um, they were separating themselves from Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton was ahead of his time in the 80s. He was a little more serious, a little more grounded um, coming out of the Roger Moore era. Um, he was a precursor to like Daniel Craig's Bond, in my opinion. Um, and so they, his two movies didn't really do so hot in the 80s. They wanted to separate themselves. So they went back a little more to like a Roger Moore-esque, like a lot more gimmicky and things in the 90s. I love GoldenEye. Don't get me wrong. The first GoldenEye, he's taken on Sean Bean as a former um, MI6 agent himself. Like, awesome. Like, people love that about Skyfall, that he's up against a former MI6 agent in that movie. GoldenEye did it first um, with Sean Bean. Um and so I love Pierce Brosnan um, just because that's the one I really grew up with as a child. But if I'm ranking all of them, he is probably just above um, um, Roger Moore. It's because of Mrs. Doubtfire. For me, for me, it goes it goes Connery, Craig, Lazenby, Dalton, uh, Brosnan, Moore. Um, he said to the face of his estate, that's a heel biker taker move right there. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. Um yes, uh smoking cowgirls back. Um my guy is a movie critic. I dig it. Yeah, no, he's a big we we all like movies enough. And as you guys know, I don't just do pro wrestling, but pro wrestling is my favorite thing in the world. So I'm sorry to be dragging this on for those guys that, where it's late. I apologize. I, I see comments talking about movies and I just want to address them. My bad. I'll let everyone get to sleep. No, listen, man. Listen, this could be a future Patreon discussion. Next time I can get Casey on, though, man. If you guys, if we do like a Q and A, maybe you guys can submit movie questions, and we'll try to answer some of those two mix in with wrestling. I usually have. I'll talk. I'll talk movie. about wrestlers who have transitioned into Hollywood. I'll gladly talk about that. That could be an episode that we do, CJ. Hey, hey, maybe maybe I'll have you set that up. But thank you guys for joining us. We got more stuff to come throughout the rest of the week. For myself, for the man known as. Casey Briggs, we are out. Thank you for joining us tonight for this beautiful, beautiful review of the Royal Rumble. Peace. Penis. <laughs>